Hello, everyone. Welcome to Common Sense Academy or Joe the Lawyer. I've been posting these videos on both of my channels. Um, if you want to check out one of my other channels, go in the description below. There's a link to the other channels down there, uh, and you can see what I've been posting on there. But I've been doing this, uh, covering some of this coronavirus stuff and the law, and I felt that it's relevant to both channels. That's why I've been doing it. So thank you for joining me. Uh, it was either yesterday or the day before I posted a video um, about a man uh, being pulled off a bus down in Philadelphia for not wearing a mask and violating a local stay-at-home order. Uh, I also, in that same video, I talked about a woman who was cited out in York County, Pennsylvania for uh, driving and violating the stay-at-home order order so that I got updates on both of those cases. Uh, so we're going to start with the, the York County uh, DA and what they did with uh, that, the citation. But if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Really looking to get more subscribers right now. A lot of my viewers are not subscribed, so go ahead, subscribe. It's a free way to support the show, and it gets YouTube uh, to give me more positive feedback. If I get to more subscribers, I can monetize my channel or get special features. Uh, before we begin, if you're on Common Sense Academy, I do a same time sip. Raise your cup, your glass in the air. Right now, we're sitting through this coronavirus. I hope everybody's safe. I hope everybody has some sort of income to get them through the shutdown. Uh, cheers, it tastes better when we sip together. Okay, so this is an article, uh, it was updated a couple of days ago. York County DA drops citation against woman ticketed for driving home during stay-at-home order. And look, we can see the ticket right here. Thankfully, the woman's name is uh, blocked out. <clears throat> it says, pursuant to the Disease Control and Prevention Act of 1955, defendant failed, I, I can't get over the fact that it's a 1955 law, okay? Defendant failed to abide by the order of the governor and the secretary of health issued to control the spread of communicable disease, requiring the closure of all non-life-sustaining businesses as of uh, 20, 100, 20 hundred hours, or using military time, on March 19th, 2020, which would have been uh, 8 o'clock on uh, March 19th, 2020. 8 p.m. To wit, defendant stated that she was going for a drive after this violation was in effect. <laughs> uh, here's the article. A 19-year-old York area woman was ticketed last week for violating the statewide stay-at-home order, and she has had her $200 ticket withdrawn by the county district attorney. The ticket was brought on after two state troopers pulled her over when she decided to beat her quarantine restlessness by going for a drive. York County DA Dave Sunday filed a memorandum with the Magisterial District Judge Tuesday stating that while there were technical issues with the citation, he also felt that the citation didn't serve the interests of justice, the dispatch reported. On a technical level, police had cited Schaefer under the part of the law that referred to the closure of non-essential businesses, not the stay-at-home order, the outlet reported. Sunday wrote in the memo that if Schaefer had told the troopers she was going to, to the store or any other allowable activity, they wouldn't have been able to cite her. Schaefer previously told Penn Live she had planned to fight the citation and plead not guilty. While the citation has been dropped, state police have made it clear they are warning people now but will cite in the future. Other citations from police around the state include a pair in Lancaster County who was cited by local police for sitting on the sidewalk drinking alcohol and two 19-year-olds in Columbia County were cited for taking a drive in the overnight hours. Um, in regards to that one, I'm not sure, but I believe some counties have put in place actual curfews. So those 19-year-olds may have been cited for violating the stay-at-home order, going on a casual drive, which you can't do, and or uh, violating the curfew, maybe both. They could have two uh, transactions on that citation. Um, as far as sitting on the sidewalk and drinking alcohol, that's going to uh, violate open container laws. So that's uh, kind of, uh, that's illegal. I don't want to say kind of. That's illegal whether there's shutdown orders or, or COVID orders. Um, regardless, that's a legal activity. Um, you know, it's interesting the district attorney made this decision to drop the citation. Um, you know, it got a lot of publication. They may not want to be seen as dictators. 
Uh, maybe they filed this just to send a message. It has made the news stations all over the state and all over the country, I understand. So they're sending a message not to drive, not to go on these casual drives, uh, and and to actually um, follow the state at home orders. Now, if she had a hearing on this, yeah, she could have beat the citation as it's charged because he wrote it up as a violation of the Disease Control and Prevention Act of 1955. It would have had to have been written up as a violation of the actual stay-at-home order. I don't know which citation that would, or I'm sorry, which statute that would have to cite to. However, if the district attorney wanted to move forward, he could have easily amended the citation prior to the hearing, which is allowed under Pennsylvania law. Um, you know, she told them she was just going out for a drive, like they said, troopers, if she was going to the store or any other allowable activity, they wouldn't have been able to cite her. Um, the other thing too, and if you watch, because I got a hold of this uh, a little bit, I, I watched Leto on Leto's Law, he made a good point here. Um, is, and I, I've said this prior in my videos, is you don't have to tell the police anything when you're pulled over, okay? If they pull you over, you do have to give them your ID, you have to give them your insurance, your registration information. Other than that, you don't have to tell them where you're going. You know, the officer said that he, she had been pulled over for a taillight. I do recall that. And, and apparently she alleged that the taillight was, uh, was actually operating. So she might have been able to beat this on its face. However, when the police pull you over, you don't just give them your information. You don't have to tell them where you're going, okay? You can if you want. Sometimes, you know, the more cooperative you are, the, be the better chance that they're just going to let you go with a warning. You know, if you don't want to tell them anything, they're probably going to write you up for whatever they can like a broken tail light, et cetera, et cetera. However, you don't have to tell them where you're going. You don't have to. Again, if you give them a hard time, they might they might write you up for whatever they can. But uh, again, sometimes you open your mouth. I always tell people you open your mouth. You, this is the one thing sovereign citizens get right is don't open your mouth, don't consent. So just something to keep in mind. You do have to comply with the, the, any orders that the officer gives otherwise, but you don't have to comply with talking about what you were doing or where you're going. You got to give, give, give your license, give your registration, give your insurance card, identify yourself. Beyond that, that's about it. So uh, this is interesting. We'll keep an eye on what Pennsylvania does going forward. I haven't been following the rest of the state. I live in Pennsylvania. That's why I find this very relevant. Um, I'll let you know, you know, there's already been two more citations, but not too many, and none out of Western PA, which is where I live. Uh, you know, these are these are state police who've been who enforce this. So they're sort of uniform all over the state. I'm sure all local law enforcement is maybe as sort of different policies in place as far as uh, writing up citations, et cetera, et cetera. But the DA probably saw the media circus here, didn't want to put this woman through, um, you know, some unnecessary suffering, so decided to withdraw it. Or, or it's possible he thought he was going to lose on the taillight issue. She may have came prepared, um, though I don't know if they actually went to a hearing. The ticket was brought, um, York County Dave Sunday filed a memorandum. So it sounds like they never actually showed up for the hearing. He just withdrew it. Okay, so you guys also caught that video that I made of the guy um, getting pulled off the bus in Philadelphia for not wearing a mask. Now, there's been an update. Coronavirus news, SEPTA uh, changes mask policy after videos surface on social media. Uh, on Thursday, SEPTA, which is like the Southeastern Philadelphia Transportation Authority, I took a shot at it. They didn't tell us here, but it's something along those lines. It's like in in Pittsburgh, it's called the Port Authority. So, um, you know, the, the, the government body which runs the buses, the subways, public transportation. They had enacted, on Thursday, enacted a policy stating passengers must only ride for essential services and jobs, and they must cover their face with masks or cloths. But a day later, the latter portion of that policy was revoked after two videos from separate incidents surfaced on social media. I didn't see the second video. One video showed a man pulled off a bus by several Philly police officers after the bus driver called 911. A police report stated that the rider caused a disturbance on the bus stemming from a disagreement over wearing a face mask. That makes me think that people were, were nervous about him being on the bus with the mask and he continued to be defiant. 
SEPTA issued a statement in part saying an incident today posted on social media regarding a passenger being removed from a bus is still under investigation. Philly's managing director, Brian Abernathy, said uh, during the daily briefing, I want to be very clear. The police were not responding to the social distancing complaint. The police were responding to the fact that the person was asked to leave the bus and refused, so failing to follow the bus driver's direction. However, uh, recall that, that it, is a, it is still a social distancing complaint, okay, because the bus driver was complaining about social distancing and wearing the mask and wanted him off the bus because of that, and then he called the police because it wouldn't be, you know, he wouldn't leave the bus. So the police are responding to a complaint from the bus driver that involves the social distancing measure. I, I, I don't know what point he's trying to make here. I mean, they're still enforcing social distancing by putting this guy off the bus. Let's remember, our SEPTA bus drivers are frontline, boots on the ground heroes who go to work every day and feel the need for protection, said Mayor Jim Kenney. He did not see the video. I agree with that. I heard about a bus driver, bus drivers who had um, contracted coronavirus, so they're very concerned for their own health. A second video circulated on Friday of a SEPTA worker telling people on a bus to get off if they didn't have masks. The worker then directed one man who was wearing a bandana over his mouth to get off the bus. SEPTA is not actually able to enforce the mask cloth cover policy. And after seeing both videos change the policy on Friday, SEPTA drivers are using vehicles with partitions to keep a distance, but were also given masks, partitions to keep a distance between passengers, which is what I've seen in a lot of stores. They're putting up a uh, glass cover. Um, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, the interesting thing here is I I've heard, you know, public health officials say that the bandana is okay. Um, I agree with SEPTA being frontline, very important individuals right now. Um, SEPTA is not actually able to enforce. It. The funny thing here is this, this Philly Transit Authority, you know, they put this policy out. Two videos on social media come out. They change the policy before the end of the day. I'm telling you people, social media is so powerful. Videos are so powerful in this day and age. Again, that's why I don't just, I don't hammer on First Amendment auditors who go out there and videotape police stuff. Um, I think as long as you do it from a safe distance that it's a good thing. Uh, video is just extremely powerful, extremely influential. Um, and I, it's hard to really hit on SEPTA though because we're all in we're all in new territory here. They're dealing with a, a virus like this. I mean, you got to go back to 1918 in the Spanish flu. So governments, organizations, companies, and individuals are all trying to adapt to this new normal. One thing I've said about the coronavirus from the beginning, you know, God willing, uh, that this will be short, okay, and that and that not that many people lose their lives. I pray for everyone who has. However, um. Our country will learn from this. The world will learn from this, I hope, and we will be better off in the future next time when perhaps a more dangerous virus could arise. So we're learning, we're adapting. You know, I was citing that 1955 law in Pennsylvania. Well, the Pennsylvania legislature needs to get together and update that, okay? There needs to be a 2020 law on what to do uh, when infectious diseases are ravaging the state or the country. Thank you for tuning in, Common Sense Academy. Joe, the lawyer on Common Sense Academy, I will return to my more uh, normal content soon. Uh, it's just, I, I felt the need to put this up on both channels. Thank you.